the greatest of all the ancient wonders of the earth, the oldest, the biggest, the most complicated, and of course, the most mysterious. The Great Pyramid continues to tantalize the world with astonishing findings and apparent findings are confirming what we have been saying all along. It can focus energy, even in its ruined state that we see it in today. The sheer majesty and brilliance that once was offers a glimpse of the golden era of this region. There is no doubt that the pyramid we see today is but a shell of what it would have been when it was finished. The erosion from the desert sands and the floodwater erosion gives us a hint at the true age of this masterpiece. Imagine this giant structure as it would have been. The outside was no doubt much more majestic than what we see today. This thing, and we say thing because we don't know exactly what it is, is literally beyond belief. And the latest in a long history of strange findings confirm this again. Wait to hear this. The mystery of the pyramid. Something many, many people have dedicated years and in some cases their entire life to try to crack what it is. But as of yet, no widely accepted answer is considered the truth. So the simple answer of the dead king's tomb is educated falsely across the globe without even hinting to the vulnerable student that there are ideas and theories that are far more suited to what it is and how it was done. The latest findings are being reported as mad scientists and their outlandish theories, but we do find these findings pretty compelling and we're going to tell you why guys. First, this is what has happened. Scientists in Russia have recreated the Great Pyramid on a small size replica scale to measure how it responds to electromagnetism to see how wave energy is scattered or absorbed by the pyramid and the group tested the interactions with waves of resonant length ranging from 200 meters to 600 meters. If the pyramid's ability to concentrate energy can be recreated on a small scale, researchers say the same science could be used to create more efficient sensors and solar cells. The researchers' assumption that there are no other known chambers almost made our jaw drop, and they really deliberately undermine scanned pyramid discovery of a huge void and one smaller one, the huge void being the size of the Statue of Liberty, by the way. Nonetheless, and in general, this may conclude that pyramidal objects located on a substrate and supporting multipole resonance can significantly suppress the reflection of incident electromagnetic waves. In the Earth conditions, this could be used for controlling the radio wave propagation and reflection. Russia have been studying pyramid structure for decades now and have even spent millions building pyramid structures to test out hidden but magical properties with absolutely stunning results, including seeds showing a 100% yield increase, human tissue regenerated much faster, ozone holes disappearing, physicists observe significant changes in superconductivity temperature threshold and in the properties of semiconducting and carbon nanomaterials and as crazy as this may sound it even led to a 30 percent increase in oil production it's just crazy it has also been suggested by the russian researchers that the taller the pyramid the more impressive these findings become so there is definitely more to the pyramid structure than just a neat building this kind of construction were elaborate. The latest study posted in the Journal of Applied Physics, of which we will post below, goes on to explain the following. This method is widely used in physics to study the interaction between a complex object and electromagnetic field. The object scattering the field is replaced by a set of simpler sources of radiation multipoles. The collection of multipole radiation coincides with the field scattering by an entire object. Therefore, knowing the type of each multipole, it is possible to predict and explain the distribution and configuration of the scattered fields in the whole system. The building material with the properties of an ordinary limestone is evenly distributed in and out of the pyramid. With these assumptions made, we obtain interesting results that can find important practical applications. So to sum up, electromagnetic energy, which includes radio waves, microwaves, and visible light, basically occurs due to synchronized oscillations of electronic and magnetic fields. The radiation propagates through space and time and is available all around us. 
but it in the form of sunlight or the waves used by home radios and Wi-Fi to transmit data. Calculations show that in the resonant state, the pyramid can concentrate electromagnetic energy in the pyramid's internal chambers as well as under its base. Basically, it could help researchers develop sensor and solar cells based on the pyramid's shape using nanoparticles for future technologies. These type of publications are of course based on small scale findings. The very fact it includes the Great Pyramid as a research topic is enough to send this information to every corner of the globe. But we suspect most people won't even understand what has been discovered. Significant? Who knows? As for Inhotep, that's the guy whose name means I come in peace, the governor to King Djoser. He showed up into the life of the king out of nowhere and then ascended into position so quickly, which is more than enough to raise an eyebrow or two, especially by ancient Egyptian standards. In Egyptian history, you can normally trace every position back to their parents, but Inhotep does not seem to have any family history. There is no trace of this mysterious man. Apparently just a common person, but a brilliant thinker who grew to great influence during the time of the pharaohs that he served and then became virtually immortalized for all time. That is pretty significant. It is as if he became a cult figure during this time period, but why? Some have suspected that he was Joseph from the Bible because Joseph is described as an advisor to a pharaoh in about the same period of time. Imhotep rose to the incredible status as the wizard to the pharaoh. There are great mysteries about who Imhotep was, where he came from, and one of the extraordinary texts tells us that his knowledge did in fact come from the stars. In ancient Egyptian history, Imhotep spoke like a true ancient Egyptian and everything he has came from the gods. It is said he was buried in the necropolis of Saqqara but his tomb is yet to be found, but this necropolis and the surrounding desert is simply enormous. If this tomb is to be discovered, then it will be no doubt the discovery of the century, but will it provide further evidence that ancient Egyptian legends of gods descending to earth from the constellation of Orion are based on fact? Egyptian historian Al Margrizi has begun work on a series of writings that propose that the history of the Giza Plateau dates back much further than what is accepted by most people of today. He has concluded that the Great Pyramid and the Sphinx were not constructed in 2500 BC, but thousands of years earlier by a king named Saurid. And they say Saurid is the same which the Hebrews call Enoch. Now, Arabian notation says Enoch plus Methuselah constructed the Great Pyramid. The same Enoch who was written about in one of the so-called lost chapters of the Bible, who supposedly was taken up to heaven by angels, called watchers in order for him to observe the human race. Could he really have been the same person who was responsible for the building of the Great Pyramid more than 12,000 years ago? The Book of Enoch is a text that is believed to have been written by the Essenes, Jewish mystics, sometime between the 3rd and 2nd century BC. In the story, they tell how one of the Watcher angels, the Archangel Michael, came to Earth and took Enoch into the heavenly realms, to the throne of God, where Enoch is educated by the angels and given an opportunity to return to Earth to share the accumulated knowledge that he received. It's very similar to what we see in the Pyramid text, where the Pharaoh is taken into the stellar realms, where his body becomes like lightning, where the doors of heaven are opened, and where a human then can be educated by the gods. According to the Book of Enoch, the Watchers were sent by God in order to help mankind on Earth. But after a number of these Watchers had sex with human women and produced children in the form of giant mutants known as the Nephilim, God caused a great flood that was intended to destroy them along with all those who disobeyed his will. Our main knowledge of the Nephilim comes not just from the Bible, but also from the Book of Enoch and also the so-called Book of Giants. The Book of Giants says that they were destroyed in a cataclysm that not only involved a deluge, but also fire that came out of the sky. And we can connect this story with what we call the Younger Dryas Comet impact event that took place around 10,800 BC that is known to have had a massive effect upon the Northern Hemisphere at this time. 
If the foundations of ancient biblical and Egyptian texts are not based on mere imagination, but on actual historical events, then it serves to strengthen their contention that the roots of ancient Egypt stretch back far earlier than currently believed by mainstream scholars and archaeologists. While on an expedition to recover ancient manuscripts for the Louvre Museum in Paris, French archaeologist Auguste Mariette spots a strange object sticking out of the sand. Intrigued, Mariette has the sand cleared away and finds large rocks blocking what looks to be the entrance to an underground chamber. After using explosives to remove them, he gains entrance to a tomb complex, also known as the Serapium. Located deep beneath the desert surface lies a 700-foot-long passageway. There, located in a series of alcoves neatly carved out of the limestone rock, are 24 gigantic stone sarcophagi perfectly constructed from solid granite, and each weighing roughly 100 tons, the equivalent of 55 mid-sized automobiles. The boxes themselves are 80 tons, and then the lids are estimated to be 25 tons. One of the most mysterious things about this place is really how they manage to bring these heavy structures all the way down when breathing is intense today with the aid of pumped airflow. Each sarcophagus measures 13 feet, 7.5 feet wide, and over 10 feet tall. But just how the ancient Egyptians managed to transport these massive granite boxes remains unknown, as does their original intended purpose. It shouldn't be beyond our comprehension to understand these ancient places, but the fact is that we can't come up with a logical answer without incorporating ancient Egyptian history from the Golden Period and earlier to be actual records of actual historical events. We have so much left to rediscover in a world that is still recovering from the ancient cataclysm. What do you guys think of this anyway? Comments below, and as always, thank you for watching. Thanks for watching. Drop a like, leave a comment, please don't forget to subscribe our channel, Design Historics. Get more updated videos from now, click on the bell button below to get notified. See you people in the next video. Till then, it's a bye from Design Historics team.